All right, let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to take Photoshop documents, so PSD files, upload them into my designs with our new custom mockup feature. And we made it so much easier than it used to be. You could set the mockups up really quickly, add the smart object layers, or assign the smart object layers, assign the color layers, etc., And then just render your designs on those mockups in bulk and even attach it or link it to any of the print on demand products in our catalogs so that you can do that during the publishing process. So let's get started. Uh, so I'm on my designs. I'm under the mock-up library. So from here, there are more updates coming to simplify this even further, but it should look similar to this. You'll go upload uh, mock-up, but first we need a mock-up, right? You need a Photoshop document that has smart objects set up the right way. So that's for another video. But I went over to Creative Fabric Kit because I wanted to show you how easy this is with our new system. And I just typed in um, uh, three, Bella 3001 PST mock-up. That's the search I went through. So I came across this particular mock-up. I mean, there's a there's so many different options here. Some have colors, uh, color fill built in, some don't. Uh, but you can basically just download these if you have a Creative Fabric account, upload the PSC to my designs, set it up in literally seconds, and then render your designs on those in bulk. Um, so I'm using this one as an example. I already downloaded it. So let me show you. Let me go right here. I, I downloaded it, then I obviously unzipped the file. So now I have this. And then you got the PSD file. So if I show you what that looks like in Photoshop, like you got your design here, this is a smart object layer. That's really important. Now they actually, this one actually has a color layer. So if I click this, I can adjust the shirt color, which is great. So I wanted to show you how that looks in Photoshop. Now, I go back to my designs. I'm gonna go upload mockup. Let's grab that. So if you look at my downloads, this is the, it was just named PSD. I'll just leave it the same name, but that's a Bell 3001 t-shirt. So from here, you have layers, you have groups, you have the mockup name. And you have the category. I'm going to choose clothing for this. That's where it's going to save it. But what's really important is you have all the layers from the PSD file itself showing up here. So if you hover over a layer, you'll see that it highlights it. If you look over here, it highlights what particular part of the mockup that's for. So you can see in this case, there's two smart objects, but really it's this one that you want. You click on it and use as image layer. So now that's done. If I go over to groups, it gives it this custom group label, but I could just say print file or input file, whatever you want. That way it makes it easy to understand. Now, let's go back to the layers. So there's one, there's one more here. Uh, click to change this color. You can see it's a solid fill, a color layer. I could click that, and say use as color layer. So we're assigning that perfectly inside my design so that our UI will understand what these are. So that's done. I'm gonna go back to the groups, group of colors. I'm gonna say colors or color. That way that's how it appears in our mockup generator. So at this point, I'm gonna leave the name as PSD, that's fine. Uh, that way I can find it easily. I'm gonna save this. And basically we uploaded the PSD. We told my designs which of the layers was the smart object layer and the color layer. Some mockups won't have the color layer, right? But in this case, that one did. So I'm gonna go over to listing. We're gonna try this mockup now. Go to mockups, image mockups, and go to custom here, cause that's a custom mockup. And it was named PSD, so I'm just gonna search that, hit enter. And there it is. So that's the mockup we just uploaded. So now you can see where I remember I, I named that layer a print file. So select print file from, it's choosing a file slot. I'll just use the default. And then color. So we can change the color of the shirt. So let's try like, just go with like a light blue here and then let's generate a preview. Make sure that's working, right? And once it's working, because this is a Bella 3001 mockup, um, there you go. So now you got our design rendered on the mockup. It's that easy, right? So now if I had a bunch of designs, I could just render those in bulk. But that's about 3001 mockup, so I want to show you another great feature once you do save it to my designs in the custom mockup area. So I'm gonna go back, go mockup library. Let's go back to custom and I'll just type PSD so we can find that. There it is. Now under advanced settings here, this is really good. You can link it to products in our print on demand catalog. So if I type 3001, this is the same product, one's just under men clothing and one's under women. So you wanna actually link it to both of those. So that way you can see it's linked here and now that you see this use for publish, so using mockup and publish process requires defining print areas for each layer group. It also requires a, a color layer. So print area here for that Bell 3001 product, this is just a front mockup. So we want to assign it to the front print area. And for color, this is just color. So that's that easy. Now I can make this public. I'm an admin. I can make it public. You can't do this yet. We might do this in the future. But at this point, I could save these changes. And I want to show you something really cool. Go to listings. I don't have all the data here, but let's just go publish, Etsy, I'm gonna pull up the Bella 3001 product that we linked it to. We could use Printify or, print, or uh, My Designs here. I'm just gonna choose one of the Printify printers. So this front area, because we linked that mockup, if I go add mockup, 
we should be able to see, there it is, our mock-up, right a part of the publishing process. So if I chose a few colors here, let's say get rid of the black, say select all. Now you can see right in the publishing process, our own custom mock-up is just a part of this. So making it so streamlined when you're just publishing your designs in bulk. So there you go. So you have different colors. So some mock-ups probably aren't set up the way. Let's go with like a darker color so you can see what that looks like. Some mock-ups you might need to fine tune it and especially the print area. You want to make sure the smart object inside of the Photoshop document has the right print area. But there you go. You can see we can just put that right into the publishing process itself. Now I want to go over back to the mock-up system. I have a few more examples. Let me pull them up here. Got an 11 ounce mug. Got the Gildan 18,000 color chart and the Gildan 18,000 sweatshirt. So these are our own mockups that we made at My Designs. So I'm gonna pull up the mug in Photoshop so I can show you what this looks like. So there's a lot of different effects here to make this work really well. Obviously it has a background color. You can see it's named background color. So you can adjust the color of the background. And also has two smart object layers. But what's really important to this, if I look at this, it has the perfect print file for our printer. So this is set up perfectly for the template for this mug that's being sold. I think this was through Swip EOD, but has that set up perfectly. And you can see that that one is under the mug left. So that'd be the left mug here. And if you go mug right, it's exact same thing. You're still taking the exact print file because you set those up perfectly, you need to have it done right. So I wanted to show you how that looks, but now let's go upload that as a custom mock-up to my designs. So let's go back, let's find that 11 ounce mug. Select that. And now here you go. So you got mug left and mug right. So what I wanted to show you here, obviously there's two smart object layers. So I'm gonna make both of those as image layers. And now it's gonna create two groups, but because we're using the same print file, what you wanna do in this case is, condu is uh, condense these groups. So grab this layer, just move it up to the first group. And now we can just rename this to print file. That way it uses the same input file, your same design that's already set up for the perfect template for these mugs. So now let's go back because there's a background color. So background here, make that a color layer and go back to groups. I'm just gonna rename that and just say background color. So I know exactly what it's relevant to. So now I can save this. Let's choose drink where is the category. Leave the name 11 ounce mug white. And um, let's go over to the listings page now and actually render this so you can see what that looks like. Well, listings. I already have the mug file set up for this exact template. You can see it has the right and left print, same design. You could do it however you want, but let's go to mockups, change this to custom, and I'm just gonna type in 11 ounce mug, and there's our mug right there. So look, as you can see, background color, and select print file from, because we named that print file. So I'm gonna change that print file to the mug one. And the background color, we'll just leave black for a minute, generate a preview so I can show you how this works. But it shouldn't take long to render. And there you go. So there's our background color, there's our design. Now if I wanted to change that, whatever you want, right? Just run another preview and you can see how that works. There you go, it's beautiful. So that's how the mug mockups works. Hopefully that makes sense. Now let's go back over and upload. Let me show you what those look like. So another good example is this color chart. So this is a preset color chart, meaning you can't adjust the colors of these, but these are popular uh, Gildan 18,000 colors. So white, light blue, light pink, sand, and ash. But you're gonna have the same print file on all of these. So it's really important that this is set up the right way. So I wanted to show you that. You can see you got multiple groups here with different smart objects. So I'll show you how to set this up. So let's go upload that, uh, the 18,000 color chart. And also you can see how fast this is now. Let's choose the category to clothing. So now over here, so you got a text. So this is the color of this text here and the color right here, white, white, blue, light pink. So that MD secondary color, you want to choose that as a color layer. Now let's go down to, you see there's different groups here. This is a more complex one, so that's why I wanted to show it. Also on the background, there's, it's white, but it's actually, you can adjust the color. So let's change that to a color layer because it's a solid fill. So we got our color layers. Now if I come into the groups, this is the, um, which one was what? Let me go back and read that. So under background, it's MD primary color. So let's look for that MD primary color. So, all right, so background color. I'm just gonna rename that now. And this will be text color. So now we have two color options for this mockup. Let's go back to layers. Now let's go through all five of these groups here and choose the smart object. So you can see this uh, smart object here, click on it, use this image layer. 
come up to the next one, use this image layer, use this image layer, because there's, you can see each of these have, and you could, by the way, when you hover over this, you can see down here, in this particular one, when I hover over it, it highlights what that's associated with. So use this image layer. So this is where it can get tricky. I need to go back to groups because we want to use the same image for all of these. So if I go back to groups, you can see now we're going to have a bunch of just different groups here. Where does it start? Yeah, I got our colors here and then they have a group of images. So I need to actually just combine these all into one group because it's going to use the same input file. And I could just say input file or print file. I've been naming it print file, but that way it uses the same file for all of these smart objects. But ideally in the future, or now, if you want to create your own color charts, do color fill and stuff, there might be too many groups, so we need to add support for that. But you're going to be able to adjust the color, et cetera, and the design that shows up on each of these. But essentially that's done. So now I can just save this. I'm going to copy the name so we can search it easily. And then I'll go show you what that looks like. All right, so that is saved. Let's go over to listings. And we'll just keep using the same example here. Go to mockups. Go to custom. And let's search for that color chart. And there it is. So now you can see this one has two color layers. Remember we named the background color layer and the text color layer. So to give you an example, let's just change this to like a really light, like bluish color. Leave the text color black. And then again, print file. Just generate preview. Because we grouped all of the smart object layers, it's just one input file because that's what we want to show on all of these sweatshirts. And there you go. So we changed the background color there. Got our design on all of these. Now text color, just to give you an example, it's got something really bright. And maybe actually I'll change the background to black or white and we'll try that. Generate another preview. Shouldn't take too long and that way you can just see the different options they see that work in there. So that's how you can set up those color chart mockups. And I do have one more basic example. Go back to the mockup library, upload mockup. This one's just a Gildan 18,000 sweatshirt. Um, this is again another one of my designs one. So let's choose the clothing category. So different types of effects here. This one's great because it has a header texture. Now again, you know, need to know how to set these up, up and we will be creating more videos on that. But I wanted to show you just the different features for our new mockup system, custom mockup system. So custom color fill, that's going to be the color shirt used as a color layer. The MD image, the smart object here, it's going to be the image layer. And then this, te this heather texture you can see as a heather layer. So that's it for this one. The groups, let's just name that color. Um, I'm going to just change this to input file all caps so you can see where that actually appears on the front end. And then the heather, you don't, this doesn't really matter because you don't get to see that. It'll just add a heather toggle box on this other side. But let's copy the name. Let's go ahead and save that mockup. And once that's done, move over to listings, go to mockups, gain custom, and let's put in that name, hit enter, run a search, pull that particular mockup up. There we go. So again, so now you can see select input file. That's because that's the label we gave it. Um, color. Let's just make this like a dark gray. I'm not going to do Heather yet. We'll just generate this real quick. And then I'll toggle that Heather texture on. Now again, to have a Heather texture, you have to have that in the Photoshop document itself. So you can see this does not have a Heather texture. Now let's toggle that on, regenerate preview. Now you'll see the Heather texture applied. So if you're doing print on demand products and you want to assign this to a product in our catalog and use it during the publishing process, if there's Heather textures, etc., you need to make sure that things are set up right. That way you're actually giving you know, the customer a realistic preview of what that product would look like. But there you have it. So that's it for our custom mock-up system. There's a lot you can do with it. Um, obviously, there's, there's more you can do that I just covered, but that should give you various scenarios to go off of. And again, you can come into it after you save it and assign it to a product, use it during the publishing process, etc. So lots of really cool things there. Um, if you have questions, let me know. But if you ever need to download those PSDs, you can pull them up, download them, or replace them with a new one, updated one, and then it readjusts the settings. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have questions, again, let me know by leaving a comment below. Talk soon.